Okay, now I comment on the topic which is called the approximation of functions from LP. This is a quick consequence of, uh, of the Chebyshev inequality we discussed in my previous comments. So the lemma which I want to discuss with you is, uh, sounds like this. Uh, for every function f, which is p summable, for p being or equal to 1, and for every epsilon positive, there is a function g, which will be also p summable and at the same time essentially bounded, such that the supreme, uh, sorry, the support of the g is finite, and g approximates f with the accuracy epsilon. Uh, it's a very simple proof. Now, after we have Chebyshev inequality and all our other all other techniques, all we have to do we have to consider a set like this, an, which is the set of those points where my function raised to the power p between these two numbers. I claim that well, actually, I introduce another set which is a complement of an. First thing I claim is that b's they produce the decreasing sequence of subsets. Also, I claim that if I take the union of all ANs that will return the support of F and uh, by the uh, complement relations uh, the intersection of all BNs which I will denote the, with the symbol B0 is just the set where my function is 0 or the null set of my function yes now all I have to observe now is that because my integral my integral is, is, a, is a sigma additive measure, I mean this quantity. Uh, when you look at this quantity as a function of the subsets, that's the sigma additive measure, so why the upper semi-continuity of a sigma additive measure, it's the limit of this integral, so it's just the integral of the intersection of all bns, but the over b naught, which is the intersection, my function is zero, so the integral is zero in fact. The other thing which I will observe is that actually that if you consider the measure of the set AN, set like this, it will be controlled by the distribution function because this subset is, a, is smaller than the subset where you don't have this right-hand side, and that's the subset which defines the distribution function. Now, by Chebyshev inequality, and that's where we use it, this is controlled by this number because my function comes from the p-soundable class. This is a finite number. And that's why we have the each of the subsets a n, they are of finite number. That's the Chebyshev inequality, which is used in this line of argument. Now, all I have to do, I have to just construct my approximation like this. I claim that there is a number and not such that the integral here is smaller than this positive number. Uh, I set my function g, which will be the approximation by the restriction of f onto this, onto actually complement of b n naught, so the set a n naught. So here, what I claim now, I claim that on one hand, my g function is bounded, and just because over the set a n naught, my function f doesn't exceed this number. In fact, I have to be careful, I, I have to correct this effect, it's uh, root b. That's a more precise inequality because my function f in power p over the set like this is controlled by, by n and actually I have to correct another mistake and not, of course, that's another typo. Uh, that's one thing I can say about my function g. The other thing I can say about my function g is that if I consider the integral of a difference of f and g, Mm, these two functions, because it's just the indicator times the function f, they differ only over the complement of a and not, which is b and not. So it's something like this, and this is a control by the number epsilon, epsilon to the power p. And that finishes the proof because we found the, this this quantity. In fact, this quantity in fact is exactly the pth power of this left hand side. That finishes the proof of the lemma. Now. There is a second lemma in these comments, which also inspired by the Chebyshev inequality, and that is like this. If I have a sequence of functions, fn, and another function f from a p-summable class, such that uh, the sequence fn converge to f uh, in norm in the p-summable class, that's what we mean when we say that, 
then fn also converts to f in measure topology. This is a direct consequence of the Chebyshev inequality. The proof actually one line. The proof actually consists of one line. All I have to do, I have to recall what's the definition of the measure topology. Uh, convergence in measure topology means that the quantities like that go to zero when n, when n goes to zero. Now, this quantity is nothing else but the distribution function of this difference at the point epsilon. By Chebyshev inequality, this is controlled by the quantity like this. And here, this is a fixed factor. It might be large. For small epsilons, it will be a large factor, but it's a fixed factor independent of n, whereas this factor goes to zero if n goes to zero. And that is true for every positive epsilon. That's why convergence in measure follows from convergence in norm.